If you've never 3D printed before but are interested in starting, then this video is for you. I'm going to walk you through all the 3D printing basics step by step so that you can set up your printer and print your first item. By the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of how to use Kira, upload a file to your printer, and get your very first print started. Let's go. Okay, so let's say that you just got your first 3D printer or are planning to get one and you have absolutely no idea where to start. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is download a slicing software. This software essentially creates a detailed blueprint for your 3D printer to follow when building the object you're printing layer by layer. Slicing software translates 3D designs into format called G-code, which printers can interpret and execute to print an object. Kira has always been my go-to slicing software, and if you're just getting started, it is a fantastic tool. It's free, super popular, great for beginners, and can be used with pretty much any brand of printer. You can download it for free from the Ultimaker website, and I'll have a link in the description below. I'm going to assume that you've already assembled your printer, and regardless of what brand you got or have, there are a bunch of YouTube videos out there on how to put your printer together, so if you haven't already, please assemble your printer before watching this video. Once you've downloaded and installed Cura, you can open it and plug in the USB drive that was supplied with your 3D printer. The first time you set up Cura, it will ask for your printer model. All you have to do is find your printer on the list. This part is super important because Cura adjusts its settings automatically to match your printer's specifications. Okay, now that Kira is downloaded and you have your correct printer selected, let's bring in a 3D file. Most 3D models come in the form of STL files and you can find free models on sites such as Thingiverse. I'm going to use this Charmander figurine as an example for this video. I download the STL file to my computer and open it in Kira. You can also just drag and drop the file if you prefer to open it that way. Now that my model is imported, let's go over a few of the program's basic features, starting with the mouse. You can zoom in and out using your middle mouse wheel and move the model around by holding your right mouse button and dragging your pointer around the screen. You can also press and hold the middle mouse wheel to move sideways, up, and down. On the left side of the screen, you can see several buttons. The top button is for translating your model. You can move it left, right, up, down, and any way you want. The second button is for scaling. This can be really helpful when printing something like helmets that typically need to be sized to fit your head. You have the option to scale your item in a uniform or non-uniform fashion. The next button down is used to rotate your model. This can be used to help reposition the model to optimize print time and support usage. The fourth button on the left side of the screen is for mirroring your item. For the purpose of this video, I am not going to cover the last three buttons. They have to do with eliminating where supports can be placed and slightly more complex things. Most of the time, you don't need to use these buttons for basic printing, so for right now, just don't worry about them. Now that you know what those buttons do, let's talk about a few other basic settings. Don't worry, all of these are very beginner friendly, but they are essential. I'm going to be using PLA filament to print this Charmander since it is the easiest material to work with for beginners. Start by selecting PLA as your material to have Kira automatically semi-customize your material settings. This is always the best place to start. After that, you can drill down into a few specific settings and go from there. You can even choose your brand of PLA if it's listed. In my case, I use Overture PLA from Amazon and they are not listed as a brand under the options in Kira, which is fine. I'm just going to select generic PLA. I click on the box of information in the right corner of the screen and it pulls up this really long list of settings I can customize and modify. However, we are only going to touch six of these settings. First one we are going to focus on is the layer height and quality. Just as it sounds, layer height determines how thick each layer of your print is. Thicker layers means faster printing but less detail, while thinner layers add detail but takes longer. For really detailed parts, I use 0.12 millimeter layer height, and for large, less detailed parts, I use 0.28 millimeters. However, a good starting point is 0.2 millimeters, which is already pre-selected. The second setting we're going to look at is infill. This is basically the density of your part. The higher the infill percentage, the stronger the part, but also longer the print time. I almost always use a 20% infill to obtain good strength without using too much filament. As for the pattern, leaving it as cubic is totally fine, but I'll typically use lines because I found it prints a bit cleaner and looks better when I'm printing models with thin walls. The next setting is temperature. This is single-handedly one of the most important settings when 3D printing. PLA likes to be extruded between 190 and 205 degrees Celsius depending on how fast you print. 
I found when printing Overture PLA on my Ender 5 Plus, 195 degrees works great. If you begin to notice stringing or oozing after you start printing, try turning down the nozzle temperature. In a similar way, if you notice that layers aren't adhering to one another, try turning up the temperature a few degrees. My Ender 5 has a heated bed and pretty much every PLA brand that I've tried, setting my bed temperature at 60 degrees has worked really, really well. Now, if your printer doesn't have a heated bed, don't freak out. It's not required to print PLA and there are other ways to help your parts stick to your print bed that I'll discuss later in this video. If I scroll down a bit further, we'll find the speed setting. Exactly as it sounds, the print speed is how fast the nozzle moves as it prints. A good starting point is 50 millimeters per second. Too fast and your print might lose detail, too slow and you'll get a lot of oozing and stringing, not to mention you'll be waiting forever for your print to finish. Speed and temperature tend to work in tandem. The faster your print, the higher your temperature will need to be and vice versa. At least that's what I found from personal experience. Another setting that we are going to go over is support structures. Supports are scaffolding for parts of your print that don't touch the print bed, such as Charmander's arms or chin in this example. Kira will automatically add supports where needed and you can adjust the overhang angle by changing this value here. I usually keep the angle between 60 and 70 degrees for PLA prints and change the support pattern to lines. I actually prefer using tree supports over standard supports, but I'll leave that for a more advanced video. The last setting has to do with bed adhesion. Adhesion helps your print stick to the build plate. I recommend using a brim for your first print. This is a thin outline around your model that gives the bottom of your part more surface area, helping it stay stuck to your build plate. I've been 3D printing for over five years now, and I still use a brim for pretty much all my prints. It uses minimal material, provides a larger surface area, and helps prep the nozzle before printing the actual item that I want. I set my brim count to eight, which just represents the number of lines the printer will lay down before starting my print. And with all these settings ready, I click the slice button. Kira will process the file and create a printable version of the model. You'll also see an estimated print time and material usage down here. A typical roll of PLA weighs about two kilograms, so this Charmander isn't using much filament. I toggle the middle button near the top of the screen and can actually see how my part will be printed. I use the slider on the side of the screen to see exactly how the printer will build each layer. When I'm finished inspecting the part, I click save to removable drive. If you'd like to save the model and settings you've chosen, you can go to File, Export. This allows you to save the 3D file so you can easily re-upload it into Kira in the same exact orientation and with the same settings. Once the G-code is uploaded to the USB, I turn on my printer and plug in the micro SD card. Before you start printing, if you haven't already, you're going to want to level the print bed. My Ender 5 Plus has a BL touch sensor which assists with the automatic bed leveling. But for the sake of this video, in case you don't have an auto leveling print bed, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. I'll start by going to the temperature settings and heating the nozzle and bed to the printing temperature. This will make a difference when leveling your print bed, so please make sure that everything is heated up before proceeding. After the print head is heated up, I click on the leveling button. This automatically moves the print head to its Z home position, which is usually the middle of the bed. From here, I can adjust my print head up and down. I place a piece of paper between the nozzle and the print bed and adjust the Z axis until I feel a very slight tug on the paper by the nozzle. Once that's complete, I can redo this at each four corners of the print bed. I go back into my settings and click on disable stepper motor, which allows me to move my printer head freely across the X and Y axis. I move the printer head to the bottom left corner and insert my paper between the nozzle and the printer bed. I use the little wheel underneath the bed to move the corner up and down. I make adjustments until the nozzle slightly grabs the paper. I repeat this process on the opposite side of the printer followed by the other two corners. I go to each position two or three times to ensure that everything is as level as possible. Once that's complete, I re-click the leveling button on my printer, which brings my nozzle back to the Z home position. I verify one more time with the paper that my nozzle is placed at an appropriate height. The last thing to do before printing is to put down some adhesive on the print bed. This is not a requirement by any means, but it really does help, especially if you do not have a heated print bed. I've found that glue stick works really well on my Ender 5's glass bed, but if you don't mind spending a little bit more, I recommend getting some magic goo. I use this stuff for PLA, ABS, and TPU materials material and it works great on both glass and aluminum beds. I've also found that both glue stick and magic goo work significantly better if you put the adhesive on before the bed is heated. After I let my print bed cool down to about 25 degrees Celsius, I apply a single layer of magic goo. 
After that, I click on the print button and select my Charmander model. I usually stick around and watch to make sure the first layer adheres to the bed. Once I'm confident there won't be any warping from the print bed, I let the printer run until my part is finished. When the print is complete, the model can be taken off the print bed and the supports can be removed. And with that, I'm left with this nice little Charmander model. It isn't perfect by any means, but it's a great place to start before dialing in more advanced settings. If you enjoyed or found this tutorial helpful, please give my video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you next time and stay classy.